Hello and welcome. My name is Raven, and we're talking Final Fantasy War of the Visions Brave Exvius today. And we're doing our one-year uh, account review here. So let's get on into it. And today we are talking equipment. So let's take a look here and see what we've got. So as you can tell, I'm a fairly avid farmer. You know, I do the best I can. Um, one of the big, big notes that I, I try to make is... Whenever a farming event or a new multi or whatever it is comes around with a new piece of equipment, I try to spend enough time in the multi to farm two of whatever item they're offering, whether or not I need it. Um, more often than not, I will craft one and then just save the materials for the second one in case you know some situation comes up where I really want it. In any case, the first thing I want to touch on, and this is one of the more important things um, I feel about this game that uh, I learned real early um, is buying normal equipment is good. Like, having some stock of this normal rated gear is not a bad thing. So, one of the first things I did with uh, the shops while blowing my way through them is made sure I had at least one piece of every normal weapon and two of the normal armors. The reason I did this... Oh, and a rhinestone ring. Uh, the reason I did this was because, uh, more often than not, the lower-ranked equipment that you're going to get is going to be less overall powerful. It's going to have lower stats than what you're going to end up with on these, especially if you're being very conservative with your resources. You're not leveling, like, a plus zero to level 50. Stuff like that. Like, it's going to be on par, if not just as good. So the first thing I did was grab the normal equipment and start using these for weapon levels. Weapon levels are a really, really weird gate um, for your characters in this game. It's just kind of like, here, here's a unit. This is kind of an experience. You know, use this while you're figuring out how the unit actually works. So uh, that is the first big thing that I'm going to note on here is, yeah, buy the normal equipment. It's good. Uh, as far as the first couple of pieces that we're going to get into here, and, you know, I'll come back and I'll I'll, I'll briefly touch on a couple of TMRs uh, while we're working our way through here. But the Hero's Ring was a minimal investment. It was like no investment for, you know, a plus five, just nice accessory to have. 20 Brave isn't terrible at all. You know, seven of eight, I'll take it for as little as it actually took to build. Uh, the wizard's hat was one of the first equipments that I built up because we did not have easy access to Sage's hat yet, and it's got evade. Like, I mean, 12 evade was not bad at all, or 16 evade. I was pretty happy with that. So the first TMR we're going to touch on is Coral Cap. This is Phoebe's TMR, and uh, Phoebe was among one of the first uh, early units that I was working on. She was the first SR that I decided to work on. And that's because at the beginning of this game, and even still now today, agility was like one of the most important things that you could uh, have on a piece of equipment. And in addition to that, this one had a reasonably good amount of defense, especially for a cloth wearer um, or a mage. And it had some light attack resistance up, which really didn't come into play until later. But for the most part, like Colonel Cap, I think, was an excellent investment for a unit that I was raising anyways. Uh, Kodachi and Mithril Claw. Both of these were raised specifically for, like, one or one unit. Um, Kodachi I raised for Shadow Links because I really wanted... I Like, I knew she was going to be part of my team for a while. You know, she was quick and easy to raise. Wow, I'm still short on this. I never really checked that. It's been a while. Uh, but, you know, it was for Shadow Links. She gets in there. She gets the chains. It feels good. Mithril Claws we raised for Ziza uh, and Etri. And again, like, it was really raised for Etri, but, you know, Zyza uses them. We used them for quite a while, and they were just there. Like, I wanted a nice, decent piece of low-investment equipment to have for them. A lot of people like Mithril Armor. It's armor that has evade, and it's got some strike-up. Um, but for the most part, I never really used it. I never had a tank that super favored it, and I never leaned into the evade comp, which really made Mithril Armor good. So, it, for the most part... Don't feel bad because it was a low investment. You know, it helps me bridge the gap between normal gear and MR and UR gear. But it, it does ride the bench a lot. Um, 
the next notable piece here is Mont's TMR. Mont's TMR is great. It helps you manipulate your AI uh, early on. The extra agility, again, like I said earlier, agility is super, super important in this game, especially early on. Or, um, But for the most part, uh, Mont's TMR was... I, just really, really good. Got a lot of, a lot of mileage out of it. You know, has defense and spirit, and they were pretty good. Has a good amount of HP, uh, especially for an MR. But you know, for the, it it, it ran its course. Uh, next up, uh, the next one I want to touch on is reincarnation. Reincarnation and Fina. Like I said, like Fina, I think, is probably my uh, tower MVP, and. That is in no small part because of her TMR here, which has normal attack charm. Uh, with all of her buffs, passives, like, Fina can hit a target with her bow from, like, nine tiles away, seven to nine tiles away. And having a high percent, I guess high, high for what it is, a uh, percent chance of charm on a unit like that is just absolutely... It, it turns the tide... You know, it buys you the time you need to get other things done, to heal, to, you know, get your tank in position, to buff, to whatever. But this has been one of those pieces that has done wonders for me. Uh, the next piece I really want to touch on is Glinting Sword. This is a recent addition for me, and I touched on this when I was talking about units. Glinting Sword has been excellent. Uh, in one very, very limited niche case. And that's because of the acquired AP up. And I know it's not the right statted piece, but I use this on Engelbert because it fixes one of the problems he has with having to double buff to get the most out of him. Uh, when you equip the Glinting Sword on him, it lets him Courage on his first turn, Taunting Blade on his second. Now, I know you can Bells and then Taunting Blade or Glashala's Armor and then Taunting Blade, but the thing about this is for a lot of maps, he doesn't get the time to buff twice, so he'll be running into battle without Courage, which unfortunately for him is a big negative. So giving him the Glinting Sword has really helped shore up his uh, AP weakness, I guess is the way to say, uh, alongside the fact that he, more often than not, has to wear Vow of Love into battle. Uh, the next piece I want to talk about here are the Sage's Hats. So when the Sage's Hat uh, event rolled around, I spent all week, I think all week, farming raids and multis and, or whatever it was to make sure I could make two Sage's Hats. I think it was like Flan or something. But these have been fantastic like the evade i never super leaned into the evade meta and i probably should have uh leaned into it a little bit more but i made two hats right off the bat because i knew um that it was going to go on to ayaka and medi and they were just going to be that much better for them and luckily i was right uh, the next thing we'll talk about is the platinum rod every good maid should have one they're just excellent uh, I apparently am short on HP on this. I should probably hammer that out at some point. Either that or I probably I probably already blew my hammers, right? Yeah, I already blew my hammers on this to max out magic. It's fine. Uh, the Platinum Rods, as you can see, I made two of them because I do roll mages relatively frequently. Uh, they're excellent to have. They're one of the better um, MR pieces available. And quite frankly, I think they're probably the best just flat staff available or the most uh, widely used. Uh, Rasagathi, obviously, we have, we have gunners. We use gunners. We built this. I hate this thing. Um, I think this took me like six or seven tries to reroll. It was awful. Um, but, you know, we have Fred, so we have to, have to build it. Uh, the next one I'll talk about is Smart Coat. I think I made two of these. I might not have. But the reason we built Smart Code is specifically because we need mages that can take magic shots. Like 29, or not, 21 Spirit and then 8 Magic Resist is a lot. Especially with the HP on it. And this is another one I just never finished. Um, I should probably put two HP hammers into this at some point. But uh, the Smart Coat, just really nice to have. The Armor of Light. So I made two Armor of Light, one Spirit, one Shield, and that was because at the time the only other piece of armor I had was Golden Armor. Not the best thing ever. Really, really good. 
not what I always needed. And the reason for that was because of the uh, negative agility on golden armor. And agility is king. Like, losing a little bit of defense for the agility on armor of light was worth it. Uh, we already talked about Platinum Rod. Sortilage. Sortilage was the same thing. I made two Sortilage. I made uh, one shield <clears throat> and one barrier. And that was because uh, a lot of times I wanted to equip a piece of armor and an accessory and I'd throw a weapon in a TMR slot and we'd just go to town. Um, this really helped Engelbert. Um, this helped Ayaka. This helped a lot of units just shore up those little places where they were short and get just enough resilience that they would survive, I don't know, a hazard crash or something weird like that. Or uh, really earlier on in the game, stuff like Gilgamesh, you know, surviving his Kotetsu is real big, especially when you have a healer. Like, when you have a unit that goes all in and just doesn't quite get the kill, having your healer just go, all right, well, I'm just going to uh, pretend you never did anything is gigantic. Uh, the next piece is Coral Sword. Coral Sword was huge for me because I used Sid for like three to five months. Uh, just an excellent piece of equipment like all around. Good stuff. Uh, very, very niche though. I think he's the only unit that really used it. Golden Armor slash resist. Like Everybody who wears armor wore Golden Armor at some point. It's got a ton of slash resist. This one still came up quite a bit short. But for the most part, it did everything I needed to. Had a ton of defense, had some slash resist, has a lot of HP. Got the job done. Uh, Drake's Run Spear. I hate this thing. Holy crap, do I hate this thing. I think I've re-rolled this thing nine or ten times, and this is the closest I've gotten yet. I cannot figure out how to max out this crit. Like, it keeps trying to invest itself into, like, magic. Like, I've tried hammering it out different ways. I've tried... Just sealing it. I think the only way to actually do this is to like buy the mastery pass, use ten billion seals, and use all of your hammers. And I, I think this is probably one of the better spears available. I'm not a gigantic fan of the ice spear, um, unless it's on a specific ice unit. But getting this thing to max out has just been an absolute nightmare. Uh, I should break that apart and just make it assault. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Ice Brand was built specifically for Gilgamesh. Uh, I don't really use it on uh, anybody else. Holy Knight Shoulder. Um, this was another one that I very recently, especially with the missile meta, I've uh, been debating on building a second one. But for the most part, I haven't really felt the need. Um, you know, there, there's been kind of like, ah, I should probably do this. Ah, I kind of want to do this. But now that we have the ring, um, I will probably bite the bullet on this sooner than later. But just having a piece of armor that has missile resist is nice. Uh, Golden Blade plus five was a nod to Stern right in the beginning. Like for anyone who's doing PvP in the beginning on the first map, uh, you kind of learned that Medi and Stern were the go-tos. Like they were fast, they did a ton of damage, they were right up in your face, and this was just kind of the nod to that. Um, other pieces. Uh, one of the pieces I'm not, and, and just have not been a fan here, is the the Fidus Lacerna. And the reason is it just hasn't done what I need it to. Like, it's supposed to be anti howlet tech, anti spellblade tech. It's okay. Like, the stats are just a little bit short. It needs more spirit um, and a little more slash resist, uh, especially considering the stats it's lacking. Uh, Lohengrin. Lohengrin is a piece I built for, oh man, Maricel, uh, you know, the calculator mage. It's just got a ton of magic and some slash stack up. It, it's okay. Um, I think it's got the highest magic stat available on a sword, though. So it's, it's done good work. Bell Gauntlets. We built the Gale Bell Gauntlets aim because I wanted a little more um, accuracy. I wanted another accuracy piece for being able to bust up those evade comps that were uh, starting to come out. Uh, Killer Bow. Killer Bow we built. I don't remember why. But there was a oh I I think I built this for um, the Arte the art and that was just because I wanted her in tower you know she was like level sixty or something I was just like okay well I'll build it and it'll be it'll be fine you know I didn't really spend a lot of resources on it but we got it we maxed uh, I think I maxed this out like really easily or at least the attack on it like super easily and it wasn't super worried Ugh. 
Don't do that. Um, pretty easily. Um, <laughs> Mage Masher was my dagger of choice for Venera for a long time, uh, just because it took forever to buy enough recipes to build the evade piece that she needed. So I mean, it's just it's got some good attack on it. And fair amount of crit. Oh, there's the second smart code. I did build a second one. Good me. A split blade. So this was a fun piece, and the reason we built this initially was because um, it had a high magic stat on it. And more so than that, it was fun to have this normal attack sleep granted. And what I did is I threw it on Zazan. It was hilarity. So I'd throw it on Zazan. Zazan would run across a map, charm somebody, turn around, um, sleep blade auto, get a sleep, and my opponents would just kind of be like, what? Okay. Um, but it was just totally good fun. And it actually did help in PvE a number of times, too. Like, being able to use him to CC multiple units is just good. Uh, Prunus, this is Sakura's staff. You know, that's really what it's here for. I don't have Salir finished. Um, but for the most part, you know, when, when Sakura shows up, or maybe we'll use it on, have to use it on Yuna, have to. Um, but for the most part, we've got the plus five. It's ready to go. When she gets here... Kaiser Knuckles we finished as a nod to Ziza. Uh, I think these are, yep, assault. So we're feeling pretty good about that. Uh, Platinum Mace. This one I know a lot of people struggled with. I was lucky enough I was able to max it out on like the second or third try. Um, but we wanted that ready for when Adralia showed up, and she did. Main Gouge took forever. I think I finished this like two weeks ago, actually. Um Obviously, we rolled a dodge because we wanted the extra evade on it. It's got a little bit lower damage than the Mage Masher. But, you know, we slap it on Venera, we slap it on whoever, and, you know, they just don't take damage. It feels good. So we're back to the TMRs here. Um, most of these I talked about in my previous video talking about units. But we'll go over them real quick here. Um, Ayaka's been real nice. Like, everything that has agility. Like, you're going to notice a theme with the TMRs that I do have is that a lot of this has agility. Um, you know, we'll just filter out here. So a lot of these have agility. The boots, the boots. Uh, and, uh, Thunder God's cape. Stuff like that. Uh, Chrome cap. Like, and that's, you know, one of the big things that I was looking for is, you know, which TMRs am I going to raise? Which ones am I going to go after? Which URs have... Uh, TMRs that I really want. And these are the ones that I've mostly settled on at this point. And um, for the most part, they're all pretty obvious standouts. Uh, the one, two that I kind of want to hit on here, uh, Saint Circlet. This piece has been really nice. It's been super convenient because of the brave up on it. Like, just throw it on a unit, let them auto, and raise everybody's brave in your party. Like, I throw it on, I think, Sid. And just let him brave, meditate, meditate, Saint Circle it, and he'll raise the units brave up, you know, in a few rounds. And I just don't have to pay attention to it, and it's fantastic. Uh, the other one I want to talk about, and this is a pretty sour note, is Illusionary Bells. And I touched on this in my units review. I hate this item. I think this item is very, very bad for the game. I think it's creates, um, it creates a meta that's not fun. Like, this pretty much is the type of item that you're either running it or you are so far behind in AP resource that it is near impossible to catch up. So I highly recommend that when people start looking at their accounts, looking at the units that they want to raise up first or play or do this or that or the other thing, that you get Ziza and you run her up as fast as possible because without the bells... Uh, it, it, it almost feels like you're playing a different game with and without the bells. And I think that's really, really awful game design. In any case, uh, positives. Uh, Kaleido Moon. Kaleido Moon, I think, is probably one of the best AoE buff um, TMRs available. Unfortunately, it is on an armor, not an accessory. It is what it is. But I think this is probably one of the pieces that I use uh, the most in, like, PvP Brutals and stuff like that. Uh, past that, one of the ones that I was really, really happy with 
is Glacella's armor. And one of the things that people actually don't know about Glacella's armor is that the upfront AP you get from this is actually like 30 because it's uh, 20 TP to use. So you get half of this back in AP plus the actual 20 for using it. You get 30 AP upfront plus slash resist. And that's really, really big, especially when you consider that like Olda's apron for the most part is 21 to 24 AP over three turns. Getting this initial just burst of AP plus slash resist on a TMR is excellent. Again, we run into the problem where it is a piece of armor, not an accessory, but the stats on it are pretty good too. So this has been one of my more favored pieces, and the reason I didn't rush up and haven't rushed up Ulda yet is because I'm able to kind of lean on that a little bit more. In any case, let's head back to everybody. And now we're starting to get into some of the uh, UR items. Uh, Hermes Sandals, again, accessory. Um, Agility is king. Agility is king. So Hermes Sandals, I grab these every chance I get. I need to be more diligent about uh, doing my PvP manual. It's just kind of been unfun, I, I guess is the best way, because I just kind of medibomb it and you know, auto through my five battles and move on. Sage's Staff. I have made, I think, 11 Sage's Staffs trying to get this magic roll. And when I say I made 11, I made three, and then I started combining them and breaking them apart to try to get a magic roll. This thing has been, like, Drakeshorn's Staff has been a nightmare. This thing has been a nightmare to the nth degree. Like, or not Sage's Staff, excuse me. Uh, Drakeshorn's Spear has been a, a nightmare Sage's staff has been a nightmare to an nth degree. It took me 11 of these bloody things to get this. And at least I have it. Now I can start combining it. But this thing is going to take like plus 3, plus 4 before it's better than a platinum staff. Like, holy good God. I don't know who, who planned this out. I mean, I guess it's nice that, you know, a, a whale player can't super, super, like, just bury. Absolutely no chance bury a free-to-play player uh, through advantages like that, but man, is this a pain in the butt. Uh, ribbon, the first Ribbon event, I spent so much time and energy. Like, I blew through almost all my energy pots. I think I had less than 100 left by the end of it, and this is as far as I could get. I have enough recipes, I believe, to finish it out, but I fell real short on, like, Joyful Hearts, I think, which, you know, luckily this week, and in the past raid, Joyful Hearts were available for farm, but uh, in this case, as far as raiding is concerned, it's been kind of a slog because I don't have an appropriate unit for it, I guess. Like, Dario's doing what he can, but... Mm. So now we're getting into our tower and our raid equipment, and this stuff has been fantastic. Like, for the most part, a lot of this, like, and again, mostly free-to-play player, has been very accessible. Like, it hasn't been bad. Like, Deep Dark Dungeon for the sword felt really easy. Crimson Saber for the first tower felt not bad at all. You know, it's kind of annoying you have to climb the tower twice to get things done, but it is what it is. Alex Ring. Alex Ring is one of those pieces, uh, and this was the first raid, and I went real hard on that, but I was only able to get like a plus four and a plus three uh, done on that first raid. Uh, but that had a lot to do with just how grindy it was, how everybody was feeling it out, still trying to figure out how to do it, not having a ton of resource at that time. But the Alex Ring has been one of those consistent pieces of equipment for me as far as accessories are concerned. Like, what I did is I threw this on Medi with a Platinum Staff, and she would just break up evade teams. She would run in Cosmo Plume and People's Venera or whatever it was. You know, it would just kind of fall over. And that felt real good. That felt real nice. Uh, Platinum Helm was another raid. Like, a lot of these raids I fall just a little bit short on, and it's kind of annoying, especially the box events. But Platinum Helm was one that I fell a little bit short on. Like, I could finish it up at any point at this, uh, right now, but I haven't just felt the need. Like, I haven't had, like, a situation where I was looking at a boss or whatever and being like, oh, man. Or, like, even in PvP, where, like, I'm sitting here looking at my, all of my equipment and going, oh, man, I really wish I had that plus five Platinum Helm versus the plus four. Like, eh, I, I haven't really felt the desire or need to spend all the resources on it. Tide Ring, amazing. Um, I throw this on Glacy, now I throw this on Ildi, and it just, the stats are, are ridiculous on it. Now, I wasn't able to max it out. Um, I think this is going to take a few rolls to actually get maxed out, but I did roll it like two or three times when I got it, 
and I did not even get close to uh, maxing magic or attack. So maybe next time I roll this, I'm going to roll it and use a bunch of HP seals. I don't know. But it's where it is. Maybe how many hammers? I can hammer twice on it, I guess. Get it to 300. But eh. I think at some point I'll probably just have to re-roll it. But this has been a fantastic piece. And this is probably, like, as far as elemental-specific uh, equipment is concerned, like, the Tide Ring and the Luminous Armlet are amazing. Like, the both of them uh, are f absolutely, absolutely great. Like, I throw this on Engelbert, and he just kind of laughs off attacks. On top of that, it gives him a fair amount of attack, so if I don't roll a sword on him, he's still punching or kicking or taunt blading for a reasonably large amount. Um, and this has really been the way he's been able to survive things like Kane. Uh, it's just been really, really good to be able to combine like a Luminous Armlet, a Bale Burgeonet, and something else in his TMR slot. I don't know. Uh, we just finished up our second Sola Tomasa. Sola Tomasa is one of those items that is a, it feels like a must-have for your mages, like having a soul, not having a soul. Haha. <laughs> um, makes a large, large, large difference. So we finished our second one. We maxed it out close enough. I'm not going to worry about I'm not going to re-roll this for one spirit. Um, but magic attack resistance piercing amazing. Magic attack resistance up makes you better against mages and silence resistance up is really big. Getting silenced as a mage pretty much means you're down to kicking things with a staff and it's bad. Wind spear. Wind spear. Kane spear. Give it to Kane. Watch him stab things. It's fantastic. Uh, the ex the big thing about this is the fact that it's got just like passive, and we're starting to see this on more and more equipment, but passive accuracy matters a lot. Uh, again, we still see evade comps run around, and having Kane with the Wind Spear and like Agrius with the Lazalia Sword gives them so much passive accuracy that I don't have to worry about a lot of uh, this dodge stuff. It's a big advantage. And it's the same thing with the Alexandrite Ring. Like, if I pick Awkward and get someone who's, like, half-built into dodge, but I'm only wearing Wind Spear and Lazalia, like, I'm still golden. Like, I don't need to worry about having guaranteed hit attacks. Um, if they're full of aid, then yeah, I'm in trouble if I'm not wearing the ring. That's just the way life is. Uh, the next two pieces we can kind of uh, loop in together. Bale Burgeonette and Elf Cloak. The Bale, you know... Pierce meta. Like, Kane came around, Glacella came around, and they ran amok for a while, and then we started getting Pierce Resist. These two pieces, especially together, are absolutely fantastic. The Elf Cloak, in particular, being an accessory, is fantastic because you can combine it with the Bale. Like, you can combine it with whatever other piece of armor you may have. I highly suggest people chase after this. On top of that, it's got a large amount of HP on it. It's got a lot of defense on it for an accessory. And the confusion res up is just icing on the cake against Kane. Like, not getting brain bustered or um, Agrius confused is really big on an accessory. Uh, the next piece we'll talk about here is the Platinum Robe. Platinum Robe was, I think, the first plus five piece of equipment, uh, raid equipment, that I was able to finish. And this has lived on Ayaka forever for me. And I think she still is wearing it. But this piece has a ton of defense, especially for a clothy. A lot of HP for a clothy. A little bit of a drawback, like negative two accuracy on Ayaka. If I start missing cures in this game, uh, we're going to have to reevaluate what we're doing with our time. But for the most part, this piece has been one of those early, early items that I got and one that has just had all the longevity in the world. And I think it's going to continue to do so, especially since we're just getting out of missile meta now. Like, having a little little more missile resist was great. So we're in the middle of the golem raid now, and this is the piece that we got out of that. Disable res up is nice to have. The defense on it is okay. The HP is a little middling. Accessory and evade, always nice. A little bit of spirit. Not bad, not bad at all. But the missile attack resistance up here, 25, is pretty big for gunner meta. 
not being absolutely def- devastated by Christmas Venera. Venera? No. Christmas Victoria, Nivli, Frederica, Lucia. Uh, no matter what I do, I'm going to get destroyed by Lothara because I run Agrius. But uh, not getting absolutely annihilated by those units is really, really nice. And I believe that's everything I really wanted to hit on as far as equipment is concerned and shoring up the little little oopsies here and there. I mean, we can check on crafting. Oh, I guess this is a good point. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that I haven't crafted just because I don't have units for them, but I've got the stuff to do it. Like, if I need, if I run Victoria up, I've got the stuff to make the Ice Lance for her. When Olda gets there, I may, or Durando, Dorado, whatever. Uh, Durando, like, I mean, I can Golden Axe if I absolutely have to. Garble will come eventually. We've got everything we need for his Dark Gloves. You know, for the most part, everything's sitting here, and I've got a nice reserve, like, built up. Absolutely, just in case. Rune Blade, in case I ever need, like, Evasion Stern. Um, I should probably build up my Golden Armors again, but that'll come around when they rerun that event. Healing Mace, same thing, like... And now we're getting into some of the gear that's here, but I don't absolutely need to run up another of yet. Um, so we've passed on a couple of things here, and it's either just because I don't have a unit or I don't have a relevant reason for running them up yet. Like, I could plus five my jewel ring, but I'm already so short on accessory books, I don't want to do that. Wolf mask, uh, same thing. Like, it's really, really nice to have, like, the extra... Ex- uh, Accuracy on a piece of armor would be great, but between like Alex Ring and the uh, accuracy gloves, I don't feel the need. And then past this, we've just got SR gear. You know, the SRs, the normal stuff like that, the rares. I haven't had need for them. Um, if I ever, if they ever change the way all of this is done, oh, I am short on that. Uh, we may or may not need to reevaluate and recraft things. But for the most part right now, just having the stock and ability to run something up quickly if I need to is the most important thing to me, uh, especially as far as having limited resources compared to the whaling players and stuff like that. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to check out the links on your left. Uh, mostly you know, magic-related things and music. If you are buying Vizior and playing on the Amazon App Store, please check out the link below. Uh, when you do this, you get an Amazon discount on your coins, which you then spend on the Viz or whatever items you're buying, and it helps go towards supporting me. In any case, thank you all very much. Next time, we are going to cover Espers and Vision cards. And once again... Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one.